Hey, this is Jerry Henley, lifelong firearms enthusiast, firearms instructor, and really passionate about firearms and their place in our society. This series of videos is probably not for the people out there who are already well versed in firearms. Instead, this is for the people out there who might be at the very beginning of their journey, might not know much about firearms, or may, even if they don't have an interest, realize they want to educate themselves for the safety of themselves and those around them. So this is going to be a series of very basic firearm safety and use videos. And I hope you find it interesting. Again, if you're somebody who's a firearms enthusiast yourself, maybe these videos aren't for you, although certainly a little education never hurt anybody, but this might be for your wife or husband or brother, or sister, or father or daughter, uh, anybody in your life that you might think, you know what, here's some good information. Uh, we're going to do a series of short videos. We're not going to get into these really, really long, drawn-out explanations. And with that, let's go ahead and get to the next video. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Episode 3 of Jerry Nine's Online Firearm Academy. So for those of you that might have just gotten here, I know there's an intro to this, but again, this is a series of videos, probably should be viewed if you're new to firearms from the beginning. I'll go ahead and drop a little card somewhere on the screen, uh, you know, to the playlist of these videos. But if you just want to jump in here, that's fine too. Last video, we talked about revolvers, and this video, we're going to explore semi-automatics. And again, right now, we're just exploring them from the, from the position of just trying to get a basic understanding of what's going on with them and how they operate, how we can operate and interact with them safely. So some of you, you might be like, well, you know what? Uh, we're already on video number three now. We haven't yet been told how to unload or clear a weapon, make it safe. I do put in the narrative of the video that, uh, you know, all of the weapons are checked before they come into the studio and therefore before we film. But we're building up to that, okay? So we started off with our two prime safety rules, and now we're gonna go through some operation and nomenclature of the two basic types of handguns that you're gonna see, revolvers and then semi-automatics, that's this video today. And then after that, we'll be in a place where we can all work through the vagaries of clearing or unloading and making safe a handgun. So let's go ahead and start off. now. If you remember from yesterday, um, we had revolvers, okay? And revolvers, again, are a handgun that has multiple individual chambers that we can store our cartridges in and then, when appropriate, put them in line ready for firing. If you have any more questions about revolvers, well, guess what? Go to the other video. The big difference with revolvers versus semi-automatics from a safety perspective is that revolvers are really easy to make safe or unload. You just go ahead and open up that cylinder and now the cartridges are out of line of the firing mechanism and we have nothing to worry about. That also means that all of my cartridges, all of my rounds of ammunition are all in one place we can easily unload. That's not so easy when it comes to most semi-automatics. In fact, this is a semi-automatic pistol. With a semi-automatic pistol, things are a little bit different. Generally speaking, they use a magazine. This is where we store individual rounds of ammunition. In this case, this magazine holds 12 rounds of ammunition. This is a Smith & Wesson pistol of an earlier generation, but again, a 12 round capacity. So what happens is we take the magazine, we put it into the magazine well. In this case, like the majority of handguns we're, we would be talking about for these purposes, it is stored in the grip of the weapon. And then from there, the slide will reciprocate. It can go back and forth. And that forward motion picks up the top round of ammunition in that magazine and puts it into the pistol's chamber. So again, whereas the revolvers had multiple chambers, semi-automatics only have one. And that gives us somewhat of a unique challenge 
from the fact that unlike the revolvers where we can just kind of move one thing out of the way or get one thing empty and we don't have to worry about you know ammunition remaining in the in the pistol in this case it's different before we get into that i want to show you again with within this pistol within the top end of this pistol this reciprocating mass there is a barrel in fact if i lock this slide back we can see that barrel here but let me show you what it looks like i've taken a barrel out of one of my other smith and wesson pistols and we can see that it's essentially a a narrow not a narrow but a, a a tube okay and the chamber where the bullet fits now this is what's called a snap cap this is an inert round it's not really ammunition but it does fit and cycle through a, like a regular round of ammunition when it comes off the off the top of the magazine that slide pushes it up and into the chamber of the semi-automatic pistol so again the chamber and the barrel are generally formed out of one piece and then the semi-automatic nature of the firearms mechanism after the weapon fires this gets extracted or pulled out and flipped out of the way and then a new fresh round is fed in let's take a better look at that we're going to take our magazine and we're going to load it with two of these snap caps these inert rounds and after we get these loaded then we'll take our semi-automatic pistol in this case the slide is locked back we'll talk more about slides locking back uh, maybe in a later video and I'm going to go ahead and insert the magazine into the magazine well which in this case is also the pistol grip and by letting that slide go forward the slide will strip the top round off the magazine and put it into that chamber okay now our firearm is loaded or it would be if it weren't for those inert snap caps and if we fire and again i should say even though i cover this in previous videos uh, the areas to my right and my left are both safe areas that's where i'm pointing those firearms there's nobody there uh, no pets no peoples no nothing so this is safe to uh to perform these activities but um, i'm going to go ahead and fire we're going to see in this case the hammer move do all semi-automatics have hammers no we'll talk about that in a later video as well but in this case uh for for a nice visual the hammer is going to move it's going to come back and move forward we would then hear a bang the round would the round would then actuate and the blowback from that round the the recoil forces would drive the slide back ejecting that one round under spring pressure the slide comes back forward and now we have another round loaded into the chamber so again the chamber only holds one round at a time just like every other chamber but this weapon only has one chamber and what happens is the bullets are or the rounds i should say the cartridges are moving back and forth so that presents that unique challenge because now if i want to make sure that this firearm is unloaded i have to not only remove the magazine and ensure that magazine is empty but then is it it isn't because if we remember that slide reciprocated loading that new round into the chamber and now if we go ahead and do the second step in clearing and making sure that semi-automatic is safe and opening up the action or retracting the slide we see now that we got that other round too therefore just removing the magazine isn't enough in a semi-automatic you have to make sure that you understand the concept that cartridges in a semi-automatic are stored and can be at rest in two different places generally speaking a multiple of cartridges in that magazine but then the normal operation this can reciprocate back and forth and pick up that round and put it into the chamber okay so therefore it becomes very important to know exactly what we're, what we're dealing with when we deal with semi-automatics um, versus revolvers again one thing i want to mention is that we've been looking at it we've been working with a semi-automatic firearm that has this big movable mass up top that we call the slide but there are uh, there are other semi-automatic 
pistols out there that uh, don't have a big operating mass. In fact, if you were to look at the the weapon as it cycles, you might not really see a lot of movement up top because some of our pistols, especially some of our smaller, our 22 caliber pistols, our our you know maybe more target oriented guns, sometimes they have a movable bolt that stays within an otherwise immovable top. So the concept is the same where we have a bolt or a slide moving back and forth, but that is the nature of semi-automatic where unlike the revolver, where the activities of getting the that cylinder revolved, uh, moving that fresh cartridge in line with the firing mechanism, those are all relatively manual. It's important to realize that the, the very nature of a semi-automatic is that the firing of the pistol and the resultant forces from that round going off operate against the mechanism to line up everything so that the next shot is presented automatically. By the way, the only difference between semi-automatic and full automatic, uh, in terms of both how I look at them as a firearms instructor and, and enthusiast, as well as how the law looks at it, at least here in the United States, is that a semi-automatic means that you get one round going off per pull of the trigger. Fully automatic would be when you can hold the trigger back and with no other operation of the trigger, you get multiple rounds. So that's what we mean when we talk about semi-automatic. It is interrupted by only allowing one round per trigger pull. You may have seen a news article a few years ago talking about AR-15 rifles where somebody purported to be a firearms expert was, was referring to a mode of operation called full semi-auto. Uh, for anybody who isn't trying to make a political point, that is a nonsensical statement. Okay, semi-automatic, one pull gives you one round going off. Fully automatic, one pull held back gives you multiple rounds. Hey, this is Jerry Nines. I want to thank you for your kind time and attention. Thanks for watching this video of my Online Firearms Academy, a series of videos designed to educate. I'm going to be linking the next video in the series here so that you can watch it. And again, thanks for your time.